Hello guys and welcome to my fourth video. Uh, today we'll be going behind the scenes uh, into one of my recent videos on Instagram featuring this squashing animation. Okay, so I'll show you guys how this project uh, actually started with this sketch right over here. I, I don't even know what this is, but it's basically it's just like a ball being squished in the middle of two uh, two things and yeah it's a uh, it's saying you know it's pretty much saying it's all about the execution ideas are cheap and it's about how you execute it yeah oh and check this out okay hang on look at this how big this pencil is okay don't like just a normal pencil right yeah check this out dude uh green what is that green look at this oh Oh, it's starting to turn, uh, this is blue, right? It's starting to turn green, oh yeah. Oh, what? That's red, bro, what the hell? Yo, check this out, yo. If you want yellow, bam, you got yellow, look at that, dude, shit. Oh, wait. And then you do this, what? Yo, bro, check this out. I'm getting distracted, sorry. Right, so this project actually started out with me drawing a uh, ball using a, the uh, ellipse tool and then um, I put on some fancy gradients on it and a gradient stroke and then I sort of varied the gradient stroke from one point to the other using the taper tool to make it look like it has some sort of a, a rim light and yeah, then I just imagine, you know, what sort of a fun thing would be to do to it. Then I thought to myself that I never uh, done a squishy, squishing action animation before. So that's what I try to do over here. Okay, so next I'm gonna break down the uh, overall color that I chose for this ball. The actual gradient underneath all the um, post-production color grading is actually pretty light. It's just a, a small shape of purple over here combined with that uh, taking a little bite out of the blue and then also some purple in the back as well. I actually chose those uh, light color because I thought I would be doing most of the uh, color correction and you know composition uh, in post production so you know I uh, most of the uh, color correcting stuff happening is actually happening over here and there's two layers uh, I got some chromatic aberration over here to make everything look soft and obviously I have to add some grain as well over here I'm gonna show you the stroke here uh, is actually a small tip over here if you don't know how to get rid of these uh, lines uh, surrounding a shape one you're gonna go down here to this uh, toolbars below the uh, preview screen and then there's a button called toggle mask and shape path visibility visibility click on that and the path line will disappear yeah pretty neat uh, and we will it will show you the uh, uh, gradient stroke behind underneath as well so yeah the stroke the gradient stroke is actually a lot darker it's pretty much the same hue and uh, range, but it's a little bit darker because I also want to show the shadow as well. Next thing that I did was, yeah, next thing that I did was add in a little bit of layer style. Uh, this is the layer style over here, which contains the uh, sort, of, sort of the soft rim light around it and also the blue hue uh, acting as a the shadow sort of the counterpart to the color above to the gradient above it. So here's the ball without the uh, layer style and here's the ball with it. So yeah, uh, what the layer, layer style contain is the uh, obviously I'm gonna, gonna have to mess with the shadow, the inner glow which is gonna be the, the rim light around it. Detail that and then the one overlay that's gonna be on top that's sort of blending all the color below it. Yeah, so as you can see, this is width. So as you can see, this is 
Alright, so the next thing that I uh, wanted to do was figuring out um, all the uh, actions and all the movement and everything and drew out these two these two fingers using uh, the shape layer pen tool yeah and then I also applied the same gradient uh, setup and the uh, layer style setup to it so I had this idea of having the these two um, fingers came in and then just kind of move slightly move around so to uh, sort of get that natural feeling if, uh, if you know if you pick up the ball and then just take it up directly it's not gonna look very natural in it because you know your two fingers gonna uh, is not gonna touch the ball at the same time one one of the fingers gonna touch it first so then I wanted to animate that and so I got the ball where is it uh, okay so yeah so I animated the position of this ball to actually match with the uh, the animation of these two fingers so my workflow was that I animated these two fingers first here I'll show you like this I'll show you in a, in a different context you know, so that you know what I mean right so I drew out the circle first and then I created a new shape there and then drew the finger around the ball create an another one which is which is another finger around that that way you know I get a point of reference on where the finger should be and then I sort of animate from there now it's just uh, animated outward like this I'm gonna animate the position out you know this one also position outwards when it comes in all it's gonna do is touches a ball around here slightly around here uh, position that we've already drawn that's how I did it and obviously I offset it the two fingers a little bit though so this one comes in sooner this uh, finger over here actually comes in sooner than this one so that's the one touching the ball and then when it touches the ball it kind of its impact on the ball is gonna push the ball and this finger over to this side and that's when I uh, animated the this position of the ball uh, what I did then was having the, these two fingers over here parented onto that uh, ball so that you know when it's rotate around it's also rotating the two, the two fingers do that yeah and as this being rotate I also animated the gradients as well so this gradient over here from this side I want it to the gradient of the uh, the gradient inside of it I want it to come up a little bit over here so that we get like a different it doesn't necessarily have to be you know physically correct it, it it's just can be a different viewpoint or something that we can you know you can use to distract the viewer or use to um, you know uh, create another dimensionality to it and for the squishy the squishy part I actually hand animated the path the path over here uh, these two points and it's gonna take a while to load I'm gonna disable some. yeah so yeah so this path over here as these two fingers the two fingers I uh, just keep in their positions the uh, uh, the upper fingers go down a few inches the bottom fingers go up a few inches so that they create a pinching sort of a pinching motion so the entire thing was done uh, it's not not exactly frame by frame actually but it's just like I keyframe the uh, starting and the end point of the animation and I just kind of measure uh, how they're and when the when the upper point is touching the uh, upper finger when the uh, bottom point is touching the bottom finger and then just I could just you know I sort of eyeballing them from that using the curve animation so you know if uh, you know if the fingers over here and the ball is being being squashed uh, a little bit faster you know and I just drag up the then I just drag up the curve in the graph editor a little bit so that it so that it looks like it's following the fingers uh, and it gives us uh, some pretty quick results as well and also I animated some overshoot over here 
So these two points are gonna be pushed out a little bit and then it will come back into the position that I wanted them to be because I create like some sort of a some sort of overshoot uh, for these uh, because obviously when it compresses down most of the motion is gonna be dispersed over to the both both ends of the ball which is trying to make it look fun and then I added some uh, some uh, flashy shape over here when it comes out to uh, to uh, stress sort of stress on the motion of it being squashed the uh, rolling and scrunching animation as well was animated by hand using the rotation and position properties. Uh, what I did was I put the anchor point at the top part of the finger. So you know, obviously when you roll it, the uh, most of the motion is not coming from the tip of your finger, but uh, instead it's coming from this part over here. Which makes it makes it look like sort of uh, sort of like sort of like one of those construction thing where the uh, the head of a digger is moving around doing a thing you know sort of, sort of like that when you roll when you roll something around in your fingers so yeah that's pretty much what I did was putting the anchor point at the top and this one the anchor point is at the bottom of the finger. Uh, yeah, actually, remember to always put your anchor point at the at the top of your shape layer before you start animating. Otherwise, it's just gonna do this, <laughs> which is obviously not what you want. And for the ball itself, uh, it's also just uh, another path animation that I wish I measured the uh, curves in the graph editor editor too, so that it matches with the two fingers. Uh, these two arrows are just uh, more of the same thing. It's just an exaggeration of where I want the audience to look. Yeah, it's like uh, directing uh, the audience eyes to the motion itself instead of the uh, instead of the subject matter. So right now, um, from this side, we're gonna have the fingers move to the other, the opposite uh, direction. And when it does that, uh, what I what I realized was that it's sort of closing in the gap uh, between uh, these two fingers before they're actually um, moving to the other side. What well, that was uh, pretty in interesting. So what I did was animating the middle point of the uh, of the ball. I want to make sure that these two uh, things. The these two points um, stay as much as stay as close as they are to the fingers as possible, because obviously without that point, you know, I'm gonna try and delete that point a little bit. Without the, that point, you know, those uh, those two those two points, uh, it's gonna make the ball look like it's going through the fingers because these two points uh, without that keyframe. It's gonna look for the closest or the fastest path to go from this position to that position and you're just gonna completely ignore what's going on in here where the two fingers sort of close in. So that's why I added that. Uh, that's why I added this keyframe over here. Uh, yeah, and the rest, uh, the rest of the video is just me uh, going back and forth uh, off, uh, with the motions stuff like that uh, by copying the keyframe and then uh, uh, scrunching them down uh, making sure there's less gaps between them uh, reversing all the uh, all the motion that I had in the beginning all the gradients all the uh, start point end points position scale rotation stuff like that you're you're kind of seeing that the fingers I kind of kind of have the fingers uh, in a different composition, um, but I didn't didn't start out like this. Um, how I started out was that I had the fingers and the ball in the same composition, which which is this one, and then I animate them together uh, to create this motion. And only after I'm finished with all the animation do I uh, put all the fingers into their own composition because I sort of want the shadows the shadows of the little balls on them and I don't want to ca complicate the composition too much now we get to the uh, to the small balls 
which is the most um, GPU intensive part of this project. Um, these uh, small balls are pretty straightforward. Um, they are uh, they are 18 uh, shape balls created using uh, the uh, ellipse tool and I separate them into groups so uh, you know the outside balls are gonna be one group and they're connected uh, with this knob and the you know the second the second row balls over here are gonna be one group of their own and they're connected to this knob and the same goes with the groups of balls uh, on the inside the reason why I did that was because I wanted these balls to uh, rotate along with the motion of the fingers because I want them to rotate but uh, at certain at different points between each other so you know you kind of see these balls are moving around a little bit and that's that's mostly due to the wiggle expression that I put in the, the position properties of each of the ball so each of the nulls have the same uh, rotations properties of them rotation keyframes the only difference is that they're offset by a couple of frames so when they rotate around they're gonna have a little bit of offset between them just to make it look more interesting uh, and this all this timing of the animation actually happened before I pre comp this so you know they're all happen in the, in the same composition before I comp this in as a separate comp and then I added the echo effect to uh, sort of spicing up a little bit and this happens way after everything is done because it, it takes quite a while to render as you can see here I'm gonna get to a frame where it's most visible it's starting to show up a little bit over here um, look it looks looks kind of interesting and I like the echo effect it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of variety between the motion uh, but with pretty intensive uh, GPU usage and also it was posterized time to get it down get the frame rate of the ball only the frame rate of the ball down to 15 frame per second uh, just you know animating and just um, experimenting with the style a little bit so here's how it looks like uh, in 24 frame per second which is the uh, FPS of the entire composition and now when you have posterized that down to 15 per second now it looks like it's more of a, a classic animation which is like a totally different style from what we had in the background and I think that's you know that's just a, a good plan of styles there and I added also added a deep glow as well to make the, those ball stands out a little bit and you know I gotta make sure to do all this after I've done with all the animation because they're they're gonna take a while to render so yeah that's pretty much it about this uh, project of mine uh, you want to see it in full you can check it out on Instagram and I'm gonna link a, leave a link down below and yeah catch you in the next one thank you so much for watching bye bye